first off, first things first, she's fat. She's overweight. She's about five on, she's about four and a half on a scale of five, five being like morbidly obese. <laughs> um, second of all, look at the way she's sitting. She's kind of sitting on her hips, so maybe she has some arthritis or some hip problems. Um, so we go to her skin, you know, we kind of move the skin up a little bit, see if there's any fleas, ticks, or anything like that. Scratch it a little bit. She's Know, she's black she's got some dandruff so obviously some dry skin um muscles and skeletal structure if you notice my dog has really big bones. yeah so she's got something going on with her bone it's a bone problem um and that's yeah, yeah that's Wait, is that the only one yeah that's the only one and then you can see like with hips too sometimes dogs who sit like this have hip dysplasia um which is really prone in like long uh large dogs great things um, then we go to the digestive stomach, which is the digestive part, which is when we go in for exam, we lift her up and feel the stomach, feel if anything's hard, maybe she's gotten into something, maybe they're constipated, um, lymph nodes, big ones are right here. It stinks. It, like yeast. it stinks horribly bad. My dog used to get that. Yeah, it smells really, really bad. Like when you're like it's eating. more prominent. It like it's it's more, like a gross yeast. It's more prominent in dogs with really floppy ears and stuff like that. That's what the vet told us about DOG. Yeah. And so then we look at the eyes. <laughs> Just kind of open them. Make sure she's got a response. Maybe you can get out a light. This experience has been difficult and rewarding all at the same time. I never figured I'd be rejected by so many places, and I never figured it'd stop me in the research of my passion project. Being rejected that many times, it kills your confidence level, and it stresses you out. And with the stress that I already have from college, it makes you think out of the box a little bit, which leads me to where I'm at now. A coach, a mentor, an adult figure, and a friend. Even though I'm only a couple years older than these kids, I felt as if I was a perfect match for these students because only a couple years ago, I was right in their shoes. I never pictured going back to my high school, and to be honest, I dreaded the idea. But even in two short years, things had changed. The legacy I left at her medical league FFA had evolved into something bigger and greater. And I had the honor to work with so many talented students. Students who strived in academics, students who had learning disabilities, and students who had lost their way. My freshman year, I had the pleasure of meeting Jenny Wagner. She was always my mentor, and my adult figure who never doubted me 
and saw me shine even in my darkest moments. She is my mentor now to this day. And six years later, Miss Wagner still does that. She truly believes in her students and pushes them to excel far past their limitations. Re-enlisting as a coach, friend, mentor, and team member in the FFA has taught me a lot of things. It's taught me mostly patience. Now, working with high school girls isn't always easy. In fact, working with kids in general requires a general level of patience that I had never learned. I learned to be a good role model for these kids and help them and give them advice in social, educational, and future worries, such as college. I told them what college was really like. It's hard, but good things don't come easily. And in a way, I reconnected with myself and my roots. About six years ago, I was that lost fish in the big sea of high school, just drifting with no connections to anything or anyone until I found the FFA. And going back and seeing the patterns of my high school experience and being able to help others break away from that drift has been rewarding in itself. I truly enjoyed my service learning project and I think it was a great approach to a different teaching method.